All right, folks, we are now hitting the lows of the session as uh, this news of a potential Russian invasion next week continues to hammer the stock market. By the way, bond yields are also going down. The dollar is going up. There's a serious flight to safety here. I'm going to bring in Rob Luna and Scott Martin. Scott, let me start with you. Uh, 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 you know, the, the main thing that, that I'm seeing here is that we kind of thought this was going to happen, at least I could speak for myself and many others. Uh, is it just because of timing or just the realization? Why this reaction right now? Could be the timing. Yeah, Charles, I agree with you. Could be the timing. Could be the fact as we show the Super Bowl kind of preview there. Maybe people are just taking off for the rest of Friday, and so it's a thin trade, uh, and it's easy to push the market around because I don't get it either, man. I mean, that's where the market's been, though, in the last, say, three to four weeks, Charles. This is stuff we already know. I mean, we knew the Fed was going to hike rates this year. We knew inflation was going to be a problem. We knew there was going to be fiscal contraction. So what's the deal? So I think the basic takeaway, if you're an at-home investor or if we're investing in our portfolios as we are every day, all day, take these as buying opportunities. I'm not saying it's today per right. se, but my goodness, if this continues Monday or Tuesday, look at AMD, NVIDIA for two names. Those are great buys right here and great, base, great buys probably Monday or Tuesday as well. And Rob, that is the, the big wild card here, right? The, how do you quantify something like this? An exogenous event that's out of our control that we probably thought was going to happen anyway. Uh, you certainly may, don't want to be an aggressive buyer perhaps today, but at some point next week, when does all of this get baked into the cake? When does a 50 basis point hike get baked into the cake? When does a Russian invasion of Ukraine get baked into the cake? Because to Scott's point, we kind of saw all of this coming anyway. Yeah, no, I completely agree, Charles, with both you and Scott. And look, I think at the end of the day, I think we've known this for a while. The Fed is really chasing the tape. Bond yields, I think, are moving and have moved to a place above over 2% where they're already factoring that into the market. I think the, the market, if you take a look at it, especially some of the laggards like technology, they've really been trying to hold up here as well, though. But to Scott's point, look, it's a Friday. Who wants to be long going into the weekend? We don't know exactly the extent of what's going to happen with Russia and Ukraine. Now we're talking about potentially 75 basis points, which I don't think will be happening. But look, there's a lot of jitterness out there. And just the feel of the market right now, it's not that all you know risk on bull market that we've been in for a while that everyone's gotten used to no yeah well we uh, if anybody was used to it today they, they haven't been paying attention for the last four or five <laughs> weeks of course you both alluded to the Super Bowl on Sunday uh, I, I guess the biggest storyline other than Tom Brady uh, not being there is all the betting right the, the biggest wager according to the Babylon B President Biden is going to double down double or nothing our national debt placing 30 trillion dollars on the Bengals all right, folks, I'm just joking before you start to get at me on the Twitter. Uh, that's a, a parody. Watch but, out. But seven, almost $8 billion being bet on the Super Bowl. New York just opened their betting up. Uh, let me ask you, Scott. I mean, what the heck is going on? How come these stocks like DraftKings and others, that was a $74 stock. Now it's like 24 bucks. How come they don't move on this news? Uh, it's it's kind of odd. Now, quick comment on that, Charles. I would much rather have Biden put that money on the Bengals, for example, than put it in the hands of Congress to figure it out, because that has not worked. So I'm taking I'm long Joe Burrow. I mean, you know, Rob mentioned it. Long going on the weekend. One thing I'm, I'm I'm long is Joe Burrow and the Bengals, and I'm from Ohio too, so that's maybe a personal story. The other point, though, you're right, man. I think the one issue with DraftKings, though, just real quick, is that they had this huge spend on getting new clients and kind of the marketing side of things. When people are like, they like gambling. People who like to gamble, gamble, and there's a lot of folks out there that will come to DraftKings over. Time. So I think some of the business models, some of the planning needs to be refigured when it comes to how much the cost per client acquisition cost is. You know, up until about an hour ago, Rob, uh, DraftKings, it's, it's still up a little bit, but a lot of these really, I'm talking names that have been smoked, have been doing well enough. There's a stealth rebound there, and the Russell was up. Uh, and, and so, uh, yeah. and, but here's the problem. One third of those companies are unprofitable. Do you go in there, mm -hmm. though? Is, uh, have things gotten so bad that you go in there? Is there anything in there that you would be looking at to buy? Yeah, traditionally, um, you know, I would kind of agree with Scott, and I'd be trying to maybe dumpster dive into some of these in, in a name like DraftKings. But look, we've got high quality that's also down 40 and 50 percent. Names like Airbnb, Nvidia is getting beaten up. So I, I think right now there's enough out there that I'd rather put my money into. And look, I think COVID's coming towards an end. I was just in Vegas, winds booming. I don't think you have to play the DraftKings. There's some really good deals out there. Put your money into some of those. I, I'd stay away, you know, particularly from this sector right now. Um, so what's the worst case, uh, Scott, the worst case scenario here? Uh, because, you know, we, we keep, <laughs> we're all kind of in agreement with respect to we have to be getting there. A lot of the worst case has got to be being built into this market. But we were extremely valued, uh, you know, had high valuations and, and, and the macroeconomics are also changing. 
Okay, yeah, they, they are, Charles. I thought you were talking about the worst case just for the world, which would be Paris Hilton putting out another music <laughs> album. But here's the thing. Oh, wait I a think minute. the issue is over the, the video, markets. Which did you could see happen. the video from the, from the girl with the Bitcoin? Uh, you know, you got to That's what I was thinking about. I mean, Hilton. anything like that is probably the worst thing to happen to the consumer since the Fed would start raising interest rates here in March. But here's the weird thing. Really quickly, the markets are just, to Rob's point, in a weird mood. So you've got to take some of the down days with the good days and just keep some cash handy yeah. and layer into names, like Rob said, that are fundamentally strong that you believe in long term. But don't look for those short term games right away because you may not get them exactly, right. say, on a Monday or Tuesday. Guys, we got to leave it there. Good luck to the Bengals. Uh, Rob, Scott, thank you both very much.